Well, good afternoon and welcome to Litz and RV, where today we're broadcasting live here in our marketing studio at Litz and RV, only one mile north of the Winnebago factory based right here in Four City, Iowa. We are so excited today to take you from the surf to the slopes in the all new Winnebago Solace as today we're going to walk you through the unveiling of the new camper van from Winnebago Industries. So today we broadcast live across four different channels. I want to welcome everybody on our website on Litson.com. For those of you joining us on YouTube Live, Facebook Live, and for all of our Twitter followers, uh, thank you again for joining us today. I also want to welcome all of our team members today. Um, Heidi Thompson is our Vice President and General Manager and as she does with all of our live monthly interactive presentations, uh, she'll be taking all of your chat questions live. And you have the opportunity to communicate with us by using the chat box on your screen, and Heidi will cover all of your questions live as we walk you through the Winnebago Solace. I also want to welcome all of our marketing team, uh, Rhonda Gertis behind the camera, uh, Hope Litson, and Maggie Breister. And our marketing team is truly the team of professionals that is responsible for all of the quality media that you see on our website on Litson.com, as well as all of our high definition interactive videos. So again, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, today we're gonna unveil for you the Winnebago Solace. We're gonna take all of your questions live. And as you can do on any of our in-stock RVs with our factory trained consultants, uh, we can do a live one-on-one -on -one interactive presentation on any of our in-stock RVs as we do on a daily basis here at Litson RV. In fact, we have several actually booked on the Solace right afterwards. We're really excited to bring this to you today because this is one of the first RVs uh, in the 20 years that I've been an RV dealer where we've had an opportunity to help people uh, with the product sight unseen, um, just based on the high quality photos and media that we have. So we're really excited to bring this to you today. We're gonna cover all of your questions live. And what we thought we would do today is take a slightly different format. And because we have such great photos and videos on our website, we would cover um, kind of the solace in different um, compartments. Uh, we're going to cover kind of where it fits in the Winnebago lineup uh, compared to some of its co uh, competing models. Uh, we'll cover some of the systems. Uh, we'll cover the uh, story behind all of the four season insulation in the Solus. Uh, and then we'll cover the exterior and the interior. So after that long winded introduction, are we ready to roll? We're ready. Okay. So this uh, camper van, the Winnebago Solus, uh, is based on the fuel efficient Ram Promaster chassis. Uh, it is sandwiched right in between the 1500 series and the 3500 series. So the Pleasureway Tofino, which is one of the uh, competing models for the Solus, uh, is based on the 1500 series chassis from Ram Promaster uh, and has a, a, has a good quality build, but it also has a few disadvantages. Um, you can't stand straight up in it and you're really going to have to hold yourself because there's no bathroom inside the Tofino. So the 3500 series, which you've come to know and, and trust, uh, the Winnebago Travado, it's based on the 3500 series like its competitor for the Solus, uh, the Thor Tolaro. Uh, so this is actually on the 2500 series Ram Promaster chassis uh, with that 3.6 liter fuel efficient V6, uh, 260 pounds feet of torque and 280 horses. Um, guests have told us that they achieve around 18 to 22 miles per gallon highway. Uh, with this type of chassis. It is on the same 159 inch wheelbase chassis from Ram Promaster, but it doesn't have the extended overhang. So it's a little bit more nimble, a little bit more compact uh, than the Tolaro and the Travado, uh, 19 feet, nine inches in length uh, for the Solus uh, compared to 21 feet uh, with the Tolaro or the Winnebago Travado. And what's cargo carrying capacity? So this has a gross vehicle weight rating of 8,900 pounds, uh, which is in comparison to the 3500 series, uh, which is 9,350 pounds. With this 2500 series chassis, uh, we still maintain nearly 1,900 pounds of occupant and cargo carrying capacity. So 1,869 pounds of occupants and, and cargo carrying capacity, of which then you would reduce for um, people, any water that you may maintain in travel, and all of your stuff that you'll place inside the Solus. So almost 1,900 pounds. Are and we would done? you say, a question that we do have, you know, when you're comparing a Solus to a Travato, you know, between those two chassis, any other glaring differences? Uh, that is a very good question. 
and not any glaring um, big changes between the two chassis other than Size. length length, and uh, then also with, um, you actually have the same amount of CCC, so it's, it's really not that big of a difference. Um, front wheel drive, so as you take the slope side, um, all of the weight from the engine being right over that front wheel drive will provide you um, certainly more uh, capabilities in terms of taking that in slippery terrains. And then one last question on just measurements from our YouTube channel, what's the height? Uh, good question. So um, the height on the Solus is uh, 8 feet 11 inches, but fact check me on that. Correct. Okay. So good. Um, on the outside, um, a lot of different things that, that, are, that are unique to the Solus that make this a true four season camper van. Um, one of the things that, that we've unveiled recently within the Winnebago Touring Coach Travado is the four season insulation. So the insulation within the Solus um, is the same um, open cell EPS style automotive grade insulation, which is actually precision cut using um, the water jet technology that Winnebago has uh, within its facility. Using that open cell insulation uh, within the sidewalls and in the roof, um, allows the coach to breathe, but it's, since it is that automotive style insulation, uh, it's not going to sag like competing manufacturers have in terms of their insulation. Uh, we've got some cutouts of the insulation in the walls, the side walls, and then also in the roof. You can see this is open cell automotive EPS style insulation. Um, the floor is also very unique, and you can see some very detailed photos and, and video on our website. And as Rhonda zooms in here within the floor, automotive style with in terms of um, um, non-slip industrial grade with polyethylene inserts over, or I should say under, a honeycomb pattern. And with that insulation within the floor then, uh, there actually is closed cell insulation. So that actually provides the vapor barrier um, for the insulation coming up through the floor. And really easy to clean. Yeah, really easy to clean. Um, you know, our finishing staff swiffered this out in a matter of seconds. And so it's, it's very easy to clean, but it's also non-skid. So as you're, as you're jumping in and out and you may have ice or you may have water and sand on your, on your feet, um, it's certainly non-skid, but very easy to clean, um, especially in conjunction with the fact that we have two exterior wash stations, uh, one towards the rear annex, and then also one conveniently located here within the cargo door area. And so as you're discussing insulation, mm -hmm. all of the water systems and lines are enclosed? They are. And all of the water lines within the Solus, in fact, 100% um, of the water lines, with the exception of just the drainage outlet, um, are all mounted inside the camper van itself. Um, there is uh, 24 gallons of total freshwater capacity within the coach. Uh, there is a 20-gallon gray tank. Um, for all of your gray water. And then as we swivel around the driver's side, you'll see there's a five gallon cassette toilet um, with a bathroom, which is very similarly designed uh, to the Winnebago Touring Coach Revel um, 4x4. I have some great questions. I'm gonna interrupt you. Great. So Lisa off of our YouTube uh, showing is asking just, how does the level and location of insulation in the Solus compare to the Revel, the Bolt, and the Travato? Uh, very, very similar across all of those as we gear towards really trying to achieve a four season um, RV. Great Joel, question. Yep, Joel is wondering, do you have all wheel drive or four by four in this? Uh, this is a front wheel drive and that's a limitation that we have from Ram Promaster. It's the only chassis offering available. Um, can you order it with dual pane windows? Uh, good question. And right now that's not a factory installed option. Um, although, and it would be fairly pricey, but uh, we've had great experience with the glass windows. Um, you know, we could look at the sizes and see if they could be swapped out, but those um, sites windows um, typically are, are a lot more expensive. Um, and we've had, you know, we've had some good insulative properties with those um, and the opportunity for them to be convex or um, canopy awning style windows. Uh, we've also had some downsides in terms of uh, scratching and yellowing over the years. Then one last question while you're standing right there. We have a lot of questions regarding the, the tires and yeah. can you swap those out for a national park set of tires? Uh, so yeah, good question. Um, these are the standard um, 16 inch wheels from Ram Promaster. They can be swapped out for anything. So 
If you're looking at some of the moto wheels from the National Parks Foundation, uh, Winnebago Travado, um, we could add those to this. Um, that would be the moto wheel with the B BF Goodrich uh, TAK02 tire. We could certainly do that. Um, but again, these are the standard um, wheels from Ram Promaster. How are we doing on questions? We're good? We're good right now. Okay, so we were going to do exterior insulation. Let's talk about systems. Yep. Is that our next location? Yep. Okay, so some really unique things within this camper van that make it um, a great opportunity to take this um, to the shoreline or to the slopes. Again, we talked about the four season insulation, um, but also some simplification in terms of sim uh, certain systems, um, especially as we work our way around towards the rear annex. And within the rear annex, um, there are some great opportunities for additional showering areas, a uh, great area to uh, wash certain things off. And uh, Rhonda, I'm gonna have you zoom in towards the rear here, towards the Nautilus system. Of course, we're gonna cover the pop top here as we get inside the overhead studio loft. If I can duck through some swimsuits here. So this is the rear annex, and with the exception of some of my rash guards and swimsuits and life vests, um, this curtain does come with uh, the solace. And it does then... Move your swimsuit, Ryan. I just moved my <laughs> swimsuit, thank you. My two-piece. And so this curtain actually runs all the way around the perimeter of these rear doors. So it's a great opportunity to hang, to dry out certain things if you're uh, if you're near a beach um, or near a lake, it's also a great opportunity where you can shower yourself down, uh, you can shower certain cargo down, especially with the exterior wash station that you see here that comes with the coiled hose with hot and cold water, and then also the exterior wash station that we just previously covered um, near the cargo door area. So if I just, Rhonda, have you zoom in on this Nautilus system. So this is a new water manifold system uh, that Winnebago is using. It includes the hot and cold water. Um, it also then includes your dedicated fill um, for the 21 gallon freshwater tank. Again, the total freshwater capacity to the coach is 24 with the Truma Combi ecosystem. But really simplification in terms of color coded valves that show you how to sanitize your freshwater tank, um, which will then draw from your sanit um, sanitized solution, or if you're carrying portable water with you, you can actually fill that using the sanitize mode to siphon the water to your freshwater tank to sanitize it or to add portable water uh, using the water pump. And each of these are color coded and there's a nice little diagram up here that shows you which mode you're in. So you have dry camping mode, um, you have power fill to fill the tank, um, so that would be used if you had um, city pressure off of a water bib or a water spigot. Um, then you also have the opportunity to winterize from this location as well as the opportunity to sanitize your freshwater tank. So within this Nautilus system then you have a water pump switch. You also have one inside. Uh, and then you also have, um, this is a courtesy light switch um, for the drainage system on the um, driver's side really makes it easy, the little grid they have showing you what positions to be in. Yeah, it really is simple. Um, so easy to just follow those color-coded valves depending upon what you want to accomplish. There's only four of them, and as long as you line them up in the right direction with the, the, the right colors, you're golden. Um, so really simple to use in terms of the freshwater system um, as well as the uh, gray tank and black tank. And we're also going to cover, once we get inside, uh, a new innovation from Winnebago Industries with the um, Eco Hot and then also with the um, Sight Glass for determining how much fresh water you have. And then while you're back there, just this annex curtain concept, I mean, it's a great way to cover maybe some things you might have on the ground just for um, lacking exposure, whatever it is, so people can't walk by and see it. You, bet. you can also remove it, and there's magnets that come with it, so you can utilize it inside too to just <clears throat> sort of provide some mid coach privacy or potentially cab privacy. Yeah, so this annex curtain, you can obviously use it for privacy. You can use it as an awning style, which you could use the magnetic, we kind of call them chest pawns, as Heidi mentioned, um, to the sheet metal of the van. And then they can also be used right behind the B pillar. 
um, for privacy if you don't want to go through and, and place your windshield and um, side window blinds. So a real versatile thing here with this um, annex curtain. Of course, within the rear, um, we also then maintain the roll-up zipper style um, insect screens for great fresh air ventilation. This rear then zippers down the middle and then also on the patio side, we'll cover here in a moment, it does include that magnetic um, quick entry and exit. So I think I'll have you cover, if you don't mind, just the electric system, power system, because I have a lot of questions that might get answered and then we'll go through. You bet. I'm just going to take a couple of seconds before we jump into electrical and wrap up on plumbing and um, some of the freshwater systems. So to the rear here is where you actually will find your five gallon cassette toilet. And this five gallon cassette tank uh, can be used then to take to anywhere really to drain your five gallon black tank. Um, this is also a good opportunity to add um, holding tank deodorant, um, but you can then take this into, even if you're out at a national park, you can take it to one of the um, public uh, rest areas that then include the opportunity to um, drain those. So five gallon uh, black tank, it is locked up here on the driver's side. Um, we have exhausting here on this side for the Chumacombi um, ecosystem, which we'll cover as we get inside. Uh, this is your 30 amp shoreline cord. And then also this is actually where you would drain your gray tank. And there is a Sidewinder style um, drainage hose carrier uh, that you can actually store your drainage hose with. So that was a question from Lindsay on our website. It was the power cord a, a standard household or a 30 amp RV power cord? Yep, so this is a um, traditional 30 amp detachable uh, camper van style uh, shoreline cord. Um, we've got it plugged into a reducer right now because we're on this side of our studio right now, just into a residential outlet, which then provides you 15 amps or 20 amps worth of electrical service. So now as we talk about electrical, um, a couple of different things. Um, within the coach, we have dual absorbed glass mat uh, group 31 RV batteries. Each battery is 105 amp hours. It's mounted up underneath in the cross rails of the chassis to free up storage. Those AGM batteries are charged anytime that the coach is in transit, when the Ram Promaster is running, uh, or if you're plugged in, whether it's plugged into a 15, a 20, or a 30 amp outlet. And that appliance that's used for that is the converter, which is located right in the driver's side bench of the Murphy Plus bed. So what also then recharges the dual AGM batteries is the standard solar, which is equipped on the Solus. And up top on a flexi mat, I don't know if you can get that Rhonda or not, uh, is a flexi mat 220 watt uh, solar panel. It's mounted to the top of the pop top or the studio loft. And that solar then provides 220 watts of recharging for those AGM batteries. They're also here mounted within the annex right next to the Nautilus system for the freshwater manifold is a quick port right here. So with this quick port, you can then connect a portable solar panel and you can expand that solar capability. Uh, the main goal of which would be to recharge those group 31 RV batteries. And you said you had some questions on electrical, so let's nail them. So let's just clarify, no generator. Uh, correct, no generator. The 30 amp shoreline service when plugged in, whether it's 15 or 20 amp, will then provide um, electricity to the converter to recharge the batteries, as well as all of the 110 volt outlets. And so then can you speak to inverters and what, sure. you, you, know, what you would need it for and <clears throat> what could possibly, if it has one, or what could be installed? You bet. So there are um, 12 volt power points and USB chargers scattered literally throughout the van. And located in the cabinet right above this part of the Murphy Plus bed, um, there is a 12 volt power point as well as a USB outlet. And there's several others scattered throughout the coach. Those will provide 12 volt power. And depending upon the appliance that you're trying to um, power with an inverter, and again, just as a reminder to everybody, when we talk about an inverter, what an inverter does is it takes DC power off of your batteries and allows you to run household appliances that are electric and er inverts that DC power to AC power. So that's what an inverter would do. With the 12 volt power points, if you don't have a significant load, each one of those 12 volt power points are fused at 15 amps. So you could actually equip a 180 watt inverter to each of the individual 12 volt power points. 
So there isn't a standard inverter. Um, we could certainly add one. If you're trying to accomplish more than that, say you want something like a thousand watt inverter or even larger, um, we could equip that for you. We would just want to plan in advance what outlets you'd like to have hot off of that 1,000 watt inverter if you're trying to gain a larger load. Uh, with a 1,000 watt inverter, a, a pretty good example is um, you can run a five quart um, uh, Instapot, for example, because that pulls about 980 watts. So each of those 12 volt power points you can use with the same types of inverters that you may find uh, at any household appliance store. Um, but if you want to go further than that, then we can add an inverter with some planning. And then, just to clarify, no air conditioner. Correct. No air conditioner. Although we have some solutions. Yep. So you're ready for some questions? Absolutely. Always. Okay. Is there, um, Dolly's wondering, is there a plug for external solar? Uh, there is a plug for external solar, and that is this little guy right here. Um, this is the quick port. And with this quick port to add portable solar, um, you can actually equip the largest um, portable solar that I'm aware of right now uh, is a 230 watt uh, portable solar and that could be then used with that quick port and you could still close that door. And that's a question. Can you expand the solar capability from what is included? You can. So again, 220 watts are standard that comes from Winnebago. Um, that's the flexi mat that's mounted to the top of the pop top or the um, studio loft and then you could expand it um, I mean, there's some other creative ways you could do it. Um, you could put some slimline panels, uh, rooftop, um, some slimline panels. Actually, we've even seen them mounted to the sides of vans. We have a guest that works up at uh, Crazy Horse, and um, he actually has solar panels going down the side of his, of his van. Probably the, the most seamless way would be to just use a portable solar that you could store inside and then bring out and use the quick port that comes with it. That would then expand you up to 450 watts, which is going to be pretty close to the uh, maximum output for the solar controller. Great. TJ on our website is wondering, is Winnebago now going to the FlexiMat solar <coughs> on all of their Class B vans? Um, not necessarily. And um, that one is specifically designed in partnership with Xantrax um, to be a FlexiMat for the pop top in the studio loft. Um, you see uh, the flexi mats on some of the coved roofs uh, within the Class C's, such as the Winnebago Views and Navions. Um, we still have the um, crystalline style panels that are used on the panels within the Winnebago Touring Coach Travato. Can you clarify again what, what the battery situation is on this? Yep, so there are dual absorbed glass mat Group 31 RV batteries. There's two of them and each one of them carries 105 amp hours. Perfect. Okay, so Awesome Lisa, questions today, that's we, what makes this fun. I have a lot of questions for you. Lisa is wondering, do you know, is there insulation in the cab ceiling and doors? Uh, the insulation that is in the cab ceiling would be provided by Ram Promaster, and that would be the same automotive insulation that you see throughout their entire Ram lineup. But yes, there is. Lisa has another question <coughs> that the panel has a connection for additional solar. Mm -hmm. However, since it's inside the coach, you'd need to have the doors open, correct? Um, no, with, a, um, with the portable solar, you can actually close the door and not pinch the, um, the cord for the portable, based on what we trained on this morning with our Winnebago rep. So you can sell Ryan out if that's the case. Ryan, <laughs> if, Ryan if you're watching, I'm quoting you right now. We'll put his number on later. Um, so everyone wants to know what the AC solution is, okay, so or if it, it's an issue. Yeah, so I mean, that's just it. I mean, w w it, it may not be an issue uh, because you literally have 120 square feet that you're trying to cool. Um, the dash air conditioner from Ram Pearl Master will cool the entire van. Um, there are a couple of opportunities, though, for um, portable AC that can be used. Uh, my wife and I have used one of them as she glares at me right now. Was it Hope with a fan? No. Oh. <laughs> no, and I wasn't laying on a, on a bed with her fanning me. Um, so there's two different types of portable AC that can be used. Um, you can use a ventless or an evaporative if you really need air conditioning inside the van and you don't want to rely on the Dash AC from Ram Promaster. So the first would be a ventless or evaporative, and then the second type would be a vented. Obviously, a vented, you have to have a discharge for the warm air to go out. Um, the, literally, the smallest one that you can find out there, and these run as inexpensive as two to $300, is going to cool 120 square feet. 
So with the ventless, obviously you need a discharge for the, or for the vented, obviously you need a discharge for the warm air. With the ventless or the evaporative, it very simply uses water um, to generate coolness and you don't actually need the discharge for it. The only caution with that is if you're in a real humid area, it can humidify the van a little bit. So you would wanna be running the Max Air Premium vent system or keeping a window open just so the air doesn't get so damp. But unfortunately, I like to sleep when it's really, really cool, which is why we went with the portable in our home to just bring that down to even cooler level. But I mean, you, you don't have that much square footage to cool. The Ram ProMaster is gonna be absolutely adequate, but there's a lot of different solutions you can use very affordably uh, to provide air conditioning if needed. Does it have sumo springs on the front and rear? Uh, so this van from Ram ProMaster does not have sumo springs, um, although we are a sumo springs dealer and we could add it to the front, rear, um, or both if that's something that people would like um, in terms of um, providing a slightly um, stiffer ride, a little bit more jounce in terms of rugged terrains, that type of thing. Goose on our website is wondering if you can get it without the pop top. Um, you, can you get it without the, the pop top? Most likely we would probably steer you towards a, a Winnebago Travato because there's a lot of different opportunities there without the pop top. Okay, is the cassette toilet for number one only? Uh, no, uh, number one and number two. Good question. What kind of bug screens are in this? So these are um, proprietary um, roll-up screens, um, insect screens. Um, the, I showed on the annex side how it has the zipper in the middle. Um, within the main um, living area here, um, once this rolls down, you then have the quick entry and exit um, with the magnetic that will close and then provide that insect protection. Do you, Frank is wondering, can you put a roof air on? Is there room? Uh, there is not room to add a roof air. Uh, because again, keeping in mind, this is a 19 foot, nine inch um, length. Um, so then right behind the um, pop top, we actually have the Max Air Bre Premium Vent System, which actually provides just an incredible amount of fresh air movement or CFM. Um, with that higher CFM, if you open up a, a window, it's just amazing how much air that will pull through in and out. The Max Air Premium Vent System is um, thermostatically controlled. Uh, so you can set the temperature as soon as you turn it on. Uh, it'll preset to 78, um, although you can add a, an inexpensive remote control for it and then thermostatically control it. It also includes the sealed marine rain hood uh, so that you don't have to worry about rainfall penetrating it. Um, but if you know you're gonna have um, amicable weather, it's a great tool for pets uh, because you know that it's gonna kick on if it does get warm inside the van. So that's sort of a question. Can you just <clears throat> clarify um, is there a vent in the bathroom? Is there a vent in the pop top? Yeah, so um, there is a vent to the rear, which is the Max Air Premium vent system we talked about. That's above the Murphy Plus bed. Um, within the pop top, um, within the rooftop, there actually is a small vent, but that's primarily used as a pressure relief when bringing that um, pop top down. Because if you have the van completely closed up, and you pull that pop top down, you're gonna have a little bit of a suction effect that it's gonna make it more challenging to do so. So you can open up that small vent um, that's included up top to relieve that pressure. And one last question before you move on. Lisa's wondering, do you feel like these screens have small enough holes to protect against no -CMs? Um Based on how I've seen no -CMs, and as I look at these up close, I would say they do. <laughs> very scientific. It is very scientific. <laughs> Um, but we can actually compare those to the Travato. I think I, I think I know Lisa. I've I've spoken with you a few times, Lisa, and we can now that we have this in stock, we can do some real deep comparisons for you. Right. And I keep saying one last question, but let this will be it, and then I'll pause no, for fine. a second. No, this is great. Rick is wondering: Is there a possibility to add a 1,000, 2,000 watt inverter? Yes. So we would want to do some planning with you just to determine which outlets you're trying to accomplish in terms of providing electricity off of those dual AGM Group 31 batteries. Um, the converter is actually located on underneath the um, driver's side of the Murphy Plus bed. Um, that would make it a little bit easier, but again, we'll, we'll do whatever you ask. Um, you know, there's also an opportunity above the Murphy Plus bed, which is where the proprietary connectivity port is. 
uh, so that we can add things such as a um, Wi-Fi or cellular booster or any type of connectivity enhancement through the roof uh, connectivity port uh, that's on the driver's side rear right next to that Max Air premium vent system. I think we should cover the loft. Yeah, let's cover the loft and um, as I think what we'll also do is I'll work inside and we'll cover some of the additional systems in terms of the uh, Truma Combi uh, system. And then we'll wrap up in the pop top just in case we have a catastrophe with the camera. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so within the control panel, um, we'll continue to talk just briefly about some of the plumbing systems. Um, so this is the switch actually that's used for the heated drainage system. Uh, and again, that's a warming pad that is underneath that 20 gallon uh, gray tank. Can you see okay? Okay, thank you. Um, this is the control panel for the Trumakami um, ecosystem. Um, so this ecosystem runs off of the six gallon LP capacity and then provides continuous um, on-demand hot water. Uh, but it also provides the primary heat source. And what's unique about this is we used the um, acoustic precision tuned air ducts that actually provide warmth within the, the floor area of that six foot two inch interior ceiling height. We also then run it to the rear for the Murphy plus bed area, but also to the bath in one. And what's important about that with the bath in one is obviously everyone wants a warm bathroom, but it also provides a good opportunity to dry out um, anything that you've used at the beach or if you're trying to dry out anything that you've taken slope side. Because they really thought about what Usage. people would be bringing in here to dry out or potentially clean off. You bet. And, and all of that. Yeah, so um, the Trumakambi system, um, again, it's the eco um, model from uh, Trumakambi. Um, that again, it functions off of the six gallon LP capacity in conjunction with the 12 volt for the blower motor, um, provides um, on demand hot water and then also coach heat. Um, here you'll also see the readouts then for the um, Winnebago added components such as uh, battery levels and also uh, your gray tank capacity. Um, this is where you'll see the Xantrex solar controller um, for the 220 watts that are mounted up on the roof and then anything that you may add portable wise. Um, this is a master LP solenoid shutoff um, so that you can turn off the LP from inside. While you're right there, could you just cover the seats and the seat belts? And that, there are questions on that, you what bet. they are. You bet. So um, a great innovation here. These are automotive style um, bench seats, um, one on each side. And they do include three-point safety belts. And they do lift up to provide access to the storage and then also to um, the freshwater drain. Uh, so you can drain your freshwater tank from this location, there's storage underneath, and then underneath the storage tray is actually w where you'll find the Truma system. And we do have a question wondering if there is a, a car seat tie down with those seats, but I don't think there is. So you could use the three point, but there's not a... Um, anchor. Anchor. Yep, to the rear. Um, but these actually are automotive um, seats that Winnebago purchases and then installs and do include the three point safety belts. Um, also then here you'll find a lagoon style table that can swivel then and be used for the swivel seats. Um, there's a dedicated storage location for that right behind these seats. And the ladder's a two piece, so it would store above the cab. Correct. Yep. So the ladder is a two piece, um, 220 pound capacity on the, on the ladder, obviously one person going up and down at a time. And then it can be stored right here. You can store it wherever you'd like, but it, it does have a nice storage location um, for the shelf that's provided here from Ram Promaster. Also, as we are inside, we'll talk about window coverings for a second. Um, these are also these are also the um, roll-up zipper style window coverings that really provide a couple of different benefits. Um, one benefit is that it provides complete opaque blackout. So when these cover the windows, you're going to have complete privacy and complete blackout. They provide a great thermal break um, from the outside, so some insulative properties, but then also they're completely quiet. Um, they're not gonna um, battle up against the sidewall of the van in transit. So within the galley area, um, a compressor-driven refrigerator. Can you get that, or do you need to back up a little bit? Okay. So a compressor-driven refrigerator that, again, functions off of the RV batteries. 
One of the nice things about this is you can unlock it first and then as you open it, you can access it from outside the van. So if you're unloading your groceries, you can go right into your compressor driven refrigerator. The van doesn't have to be level for this to function and it also functions then um, when the um, coach is at higher altitudes. Again, you don't have to be level. Uh, you can go up to a 25% grade and the compressor driven fridge is still gonna purr along fine. And again, that runs off of the dual AGM Group 31 RV batteries. While you're sitting there, yeah. in terms of LP, what is that? Where does it go? Which I think so. It's, your... it's um, patio side, runner right underneath the wider running boards, and it's six gallons. And the primary use of that would be gas grill cooking. If you put a connector on for the Truma Combi ecosystem, and then for the dual burner range top uh, that is located right here inside the galley would be the primary use for the six gallon propane tank. Yep, and Rhonda is showing that. And right to the left of it is that um, sewage hose carrier you were talking yep. about. So while you're down there, Rhonda, also um, we do have the same wider running boards that um, we added with the Winnebago Travado, or I should say that Winnebago did. Um, wider running boards. And then on each side, there is a tie out that can be used for securing a high end bicycle or for tying out a pet. Okay, so let's continue on in the galley if you guys are cool with that, and then we'll wrap up in the pop top. Do the windows open? They do. Was that a question or a question to me? It was a question. Both. <laughs> um, there is, um, before you jump right in here, Rhonda, there is storage in the floor right in front of the swivel driver seat. Um, right in front of the bench seat, and then there's also storage underneath um, each of these cushions for those automotive style seats. And what is that hatch in the floor? That's the storage I was just oh, sorry. mentioning. No, you're fine. I am listening to you. <laughs> so there is storage in the floor here, and you know, it's a really good opportunity to kind of showcase all of the heavy duty um, aluminum that Winnebago uses that surrounds um, the doors and then also the overhead cabinet doors that we're going to touch on here just in a second. Which is just a Winnebago advantage. They can build what they need with their own and not be working around suppliers. Absolutely. I mean, with vertical integration and building 70 to 80% of our inputs, um, you know, we can control tolerances and fit and finish, but also um, um, provides just a lot more capabilities in terms of interior design. Can I rattle some questions while Rhonda gets inside? Sure. So Rick is asking, while the van is in transit, will the Group 31 batteries be charged simultaneously by the alternator and solar panel, or is the solar charging only when the coach motor is off? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, that's a great question. No, actually, they'll be charging simultaneously. So you're going to have solar absorption. Uh, you're going to have the alternator off the Ram ProMaster chassis um, that will then be recharging the batteries completely with actually two different sources then in that case. Perfect. So we talked about all these different 12 volt power points and USBs. There's two here, there's two in the galley, there's two overhead the Murphy Plus bed, there's um, several up here in the pop top. So a lot of opportunities for um, 12 volt appliances, but then also for um, adding any type of an inverter that you might want to add. Some great things here inside the bath, and then I'll button this up. This is the um, cassette toilet with the bath in one, dry dock, storage areas, um, also a um, clothing holder here up top and then again you can see the uh, Truma Combi diffuser that provides heat Oops, sorry about that for the um, bath in one one thing you'll also note is you'll see all of these different magnetic catches um, throughout the van there's one here for this door so that it doesn't um, open up sideways um, you can see the vent here as I close that which is a good transition then I'm gonna come over here Rhonda to cover the slam latches and then also the magnetic mounts. So with each of these doors that Winnebago builds in house, there's a magnetic catch right up top here. And the beauty of this is that now as you're loading and unloading, you've got access to every square inch of all of the storage throughout the van. This one also includes adjustable shelving. And the main difference there would be when you look at some of the competition and some other competing manufacturers, when they actually use hinges, the doors are only going to open to about this angle. And so one, it's kind of a head knocker, 
but then also it limits your ability to load and unload the coach. These are also upgraded slam latches, so they're extremely durable and they lock in transit. So great durability here. Um, with the kitchen or the galley, again, another 110 volt outlet, um, some space saving design. Again, 12 volt and USBs, high rise um, gooseneck style sink. And then also right underneath this sink is the new EcoHot system. Okay, and the EcoHot system, since we are expected to be using this to conserve water, when your True Maccabi system is on and it's providing hot water, you certainly don't want to burn two to three gallons of fresh water trying to get hot water um, to go to your faucet. You can actually just set that on the counter if you want, Rhonda. Um, what you can actually do then is throw this valve into preheat mood. Within preheat mode, it's going to then loop the hot water and pump it back into the tank. So you're not going to lose a drop of water drawing hot water to your spigot. So again, this is the new EcoHot system. Right behind this sight glass is actually where your freshwater tank is. And you can see that it's illuminated. So not only does it provide a great nightlight, but you can actually see at a glance how much water you have left in your freshwater tank. And we'll have some great pictures of this and an additional video on our website, but this is the sight glass that then allows you to see how much fresh water you have. And then Rhonda, while you're right there, I'm just gonna open up all of the below store below floor storage, excuse me, um, in the rear here. So again, the same heavy duty aluminum extrusion with the honeycomb industrial style floor. Each of these lift up and there is also then a latch so that you can keep them open. But just check out all of that additional storage then with the same easy to clean honeycomb design, which is all integrated then beneath the floor. Can you measure something? Of course. Barb would like you to measure uh, from the bathroom wall to the back. Okay. Just for what that under bench storage will be. Okay. So from the rear of the bathroom, it is um, 57 inches. And what is it wide? Um, between the two benches, I'm hoping is the question. Yep. Sorry. Uh, 35 and a quarter. Thank you. You bet. So great storage here in this area below the floor. And as I close these, we'll also then showcase all of the under bed storage for the Murphy Plus bed, which is here, here, a drawer to your right. This is the tire inflation repair kit. And again, the same insulation is around the wheel wells, which is what generates a lot of that road noise. So Winnebago has insulated that area. Again, you've got the slam latches storage as well underneath this side of the Murphy Plus bed. And then this is a European style slat bed with a memory foam style sofa and cushion. And then as the Murphy Plus bed drops, it converts then to a uh, 59 by 77 inch queen bed. So it's just one inch shy of 60 and three inches shy of a traditional 60 by 80 inch queen bed. And the slat system is nice. It provides nice support. Yeah, it provides great, great support. It also keeps your mattress nice and cool and eliminates any potential mold or mildew buildup from other RV manufacturers that are literally taking vinyl on the backside and slapping it down on plywood. And while you're standing there, can you just clarify on that little workstation? Is it, it uh, what's the deal? It moves? You bet. So I was just going to cover that next. I'll cover um, Russ's. Instagram table. So this slides out and provides a great workstation here. You know, most people are going to bring their own camping style chair. It can be used in this location, but if you want an even better view to the rear, you can slide it to the rear and then have a bigger workstation here as well. So again, this just slides on that same slat system. So you can place it literally wherever you want. Uh, but the main storage area, is underneath then the Murphy Plus bed. So it kind of stores in the ceiling of the bed, so to speak. Could you do one more measurement, Ren? Of course. Just height under then that Murphy bed when that's, when um, 
the bed is down. When the bed is down. Or well, you can tell from there, from the floor to underneath. to the top of the slab. Mm -hmm. um, twenty three and a half. Thank you. So twenty three and a half inches is that measurement from the floor to the bottom of the slab bed. So as this Murphy Plus bed drops, again, you've got a queen bed, and this is actually intentionally designed to be 100% firm. Your team doesn't mind seeing you struggle a little bit. It usually goes pretty smoothly. That's fine. <laughs> I'm totally manageable. You gonna multitask there, Rhonda? So again, just a huge um, 59 by 77 inch sleeping surface. Really thick mattress compared to what you'll see in the marketplace. Absolutely, yep. And then again, you've got the same roll up style window coverings on each side, each of the windows open. Of course, additional storage up top here. And then this is the access and the roof port for the connectivity port. Again, 12 volt power points and 110 volt outlets. So Lisa is asking, and maybe Lisa, he's moved since, so if I miss this, there is a vent um, to your right. Okay. Do you see it there on the, it might be on the base. I'm not sure what we're looking at. Lisa, can you clarify quickly? Lisa just wanted to see where I dropped the table. <laughs> Are you talking about the vent on the back side of the Nautilus system? I think so, yes. Yeah, just mechanical access. Um, there is storage that actually goes almost the full length here of the patio side portion of the Murphy bed. Okay, so should we wrap up in the pop top? Yep, that sounds good. As we're getting situated, a general question is, uh, you know, what is what are your impressions in terms of storage space versus a Travato 59G? Uh, storage versus a 59G, I would actually say that if you broke it down in terms of measurements, there's probably more in a 59G, but it's going to be negligible. You got to remember the coach is a little bit um, shorter in terms of length. Um, but it does provide some great storage with both. I think it's just going to depend upon you know, where you're storing things. Yeah. What was weight capacity of the pop top again? So, how you doing up there, Rhonda? Do you want me to just pass you the mic? So the overhead pop top has a 440 pound weight capacity. Um, it is uh, 220 pounds on the ladder. Obviously one person is going to be going up and one person going down at a time. Um, but with the pop top, one of the very unique things that Winnebago has added up top is the Froley Star bed foundation. And so those are independent springs underneath. So if you look under the mattress of a lot of competing manufacturers, uh, you're going to see vinyl that's laying over plywood. Um, that's actually the same quality sleep system that we use in a lot of other B vans. Again, the design is that it will keep the mattress nice and cool, provides great support, uh, and then also alleviates any mold or mildew buildup. And in terms of operation, when you're pulling it down or putting it up, it's just, I can attest to this, it's just super easy. It is. And um, you can see there are vented uh, windows um, to the viewer's right and then also right behind Rhonda towards the front. Extremely sturdy injection molded fiberglass, so it has great load capacity up top. Um, it does have the gas struts that make it really easy to bring that um, bed up and down. And then two different safety latches to ensure that it stays down in transit and has been wind tested in just some crazy wind speeds um, from the manufacturer that they've given us in terms of um, wind hitting the side of that canvas, um, the windows, and then also the zippered um, covers for the ventilated areas in the front and towards the driver's side. Is there insulation in the loft? <laughs> there is insulation in the studio loft, absolutely, um, primarily underneath. 
and then to the sides obviously it's the canvas and then the um, fiberglass up top. Um, what is the, is there, is the warranty aligned with Winnebago's warranty on the top? It is, so it's going to fall under that one year 15. I have a few other random questions, unless you have more about that. Um, no, um, other than the fact that there's some real good lighting up there, as well as um, USB power points and 12 volt power points. Are we leaving Rhonda up there while I ask questions? <laughs> uh, we certainly can. Okay. We can transition our camera and we can still continue to cover questions. Okay. Is a roof rack possible? This is a popular question. They have kayaks and would like <coughs> to know if there's any options available yet. So there are, and there are three opportunities that we have researched and would feel confident in terms of doing in terms of roof racks, um, or excuse me, just racks in general. Um, there are hitch mounted. So to the rear with that 3,500 pound tow capacity, to that two inch receiver, there are hitch mounted racks. Um, so that would be one opportunity. Again, depending upon just the load capacity, um, Yakima does make a um, roof rack for a European pot top. Um, so again, that would be a Yakima roof rack um, that we would then wanna make sure that we also have ladder access for you. And then the third, um, depending upon, again, just the load capacity that's needed for rack access, um, we could do a, um, a kind of a similar version of a vertirack, although a vertirack we wouldn't be able to use because of the um, actual rail being used by the pop top, but it would be the same type of a side van mounted rack, uh, similar to what you would see ProMaster vans uh, that are used by glass companies. So again, that would be a side mounted rack that we would wanna place on the driver's side. So again, it just kind of depends on the size of what you're trying to store, um, the size of your kayaks, how easy the access is that you want to have to it. But again, hitch mounted uh, Yakima style up on the pop top or almost glass style um, from commercial cargo vans on the driver's side. Eugene on our YouTube channel is asking if there's an iPhone connection for GPS or any features that are Bluetooth. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, full Bluetooth compatibility within the Ram ProMaster front touchscreen that does include the backup camera to the rear. Um, so full Bluetooth connectivity with a smartphone or a tablet so that you can use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto um, for the audio side within um, um, voice-enabled GPS, uh, voice-enabled hands-free calling. Eugene is also wondering if there is an awning option. Good question. Um, within the awning, so we're kind of still in the infancy stage of researching this, um, but um, we do foresee some opportunities with a powered box style awning um, that would obviously have to clear the sliding door and then bracketed um, so that it doesn't interfere with the pop top. Dolly is wondering if she can put the work table that's inside anywhere outside. Uh, as long as we would put a rail there for you. And again, it's gonna kind of be dependent upon your grade um, so you'd want to determine if you wanted multiple slats or what you would want. Um, but that was actually a question that came up um, as we were doing professional development this morning is could you place it outside? You absolutely could. Um, we would just want to find out what that height is that you want on the rear cargo doors to add that slat for that Instagram table. Where are the house batteries located? The house batteries are located up underneath so that they don't take up any storage. Uh, uh, similar, similar installation style to the Travato. Frank is wondering what temps this RV is good for in winter camping. Uh, winter camping, that's a really good loaded question, so I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, it's going to depend a lot on um, wind speed and wind chill. Um, we've had people staying below freezing here with us um, without issue. Wind chill makes all the difference. Wind makes a lot of difference, and it's also somewhat floor plan precedent as well, depending upon um, where the plumbing access is. You know, one of the great things about the Solus is, you know, not only is it automotive insulated and designed to be four season with all the water lines enclosed, but your bath is mid coach and your galley is mid coach um, and very centrally located to the Truma Combi ecosystem. So um, probably even easier. Um, and Rick is wondering, does the vent up in the pop top have a fan in it, or is it just a vent? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the vent in the pop top is solely a vent. There's not a um, mechanical or a 12-volt fan. Awesome. But I have seen some accessories that are added that way. 
And again, with all of the 12 volt power points, whether it's a plug-in style or a USB, a lot of different opportunities for desk fans, um, household fans. Um, you can obviously use the Max Air Premium vent system. And then um, also my Scientology experiment with my two different levels of air conditioning that I was talking about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did it. You covered everything. So, so you, have to, you have to get back to journaling at your Instagram table. I'll have to get back to journaling. So again, I want to thank all of you for joining us today as we broadcast across four different channels. Um, our website, Litson.com, uh, YouTube Live, Facebook Live, and for all of our Twitter uh, followers on Periscope. I want to th thank uh, Maggie, Hope, and Rhonda. Rhonda, you were very nomadic today. So thank you for that. Heidi, thank you for uh, moderating our chat as today we unveil for you the Winnebago Solus, uh, the newest entry in the camper van lineup from Winnebago Industries. Again, if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one live interactive presentation uh, from the comfort of your own home or office, we have the Solus in stock. Um, and again, we have several that are pre-sold sight unseen. So you can take that opportunity with any of our factory trained consultants on any of our in-stock RVs, whether it's the Solus, another camper van, a Class C or a Class A uh, here at Litson RV. Again, we're only one mile north of the Winnebago factory based right here in Forest City, Iowa.